I own a small business, and before that, I owned several other small businesses, and, and before that, I was a, a police officer for the government, and now that I am a, a small business owner in a current business, we offer a, a an exclusive high-end service, and we have certain professional standards that we need to meet. And that's my choice. Many other people who are in a similar industry don't choose to have high standards uh, that I do, but I, I do choose that for my business. And I have that right. Many of the people who work with me, I'll call them employees, this kind of goes to anyone who is uh, customer facing, don't necessarily have my background and don't understand what professionalism is, specifically in terms of, of physical appearance and, and maybe the, the way a person sounds and smells and uh, how they look. They just don't have that understanding. So I thought I would share the benefit of my years of experience in different professional environments. I don't have experience in the professional corporate environment. Uh, wearing a, a shirt and tie with a, a jacket, uh, with a suit jacket every day. Um, I, whenever I dressed formally, it was a little bit less formal than that. Uh, it was khakis and a shirt and a tie and a sports coat. So I, I'm not going to claim to have any knowledge of what is professional if you work for IBM uh, as in a, uh, I don't know, as a person in a cubicle at IBM. So in law enforcement, some of the things I learned was that short hair is a good idea. And why is this? Uh, why is it that, that a man, it's primarily who I'm talking about here are males, why shouldn't a male have long hair or uh, a curly, big, huge, fluffy hairdo? Um, why should a man have short hair? Well, because many of the people who will be doing business or associating with that man think that short hair is better than long hair. That's kind of the short, short and simple of it. There's nothing morally better or worse about a person who has long hair or short hair. No, yeah, it's, it's not a moral thing. It is perception. As a professional, this is kind of skipping to the, not a law enforcement thing that I said I was going to talk about, but from a business perspective, it is a good idea to dress in the same way that your client, your customer, is accustomed and appreciates the people dressing who give them advice. So their attorney, their accountant, uh, that kind of person, you want to dress how they dress. And I live in the casual Rocky Mountain West, so attorneys and accountants, if they were doing an outdoor activity... They would not wear a t-shirt. They would wear a button-up shirt, the, maybe a fly fishing shirt or something like that. They wouldn't wear shorts, depending on the situation, but generally they would wear long pants. And those pants would not be jeans with holes in them or those fancy uh, sparkly things, uh, swirlies on the, uh, the butt pockets. It w wouldn't be that. Um, it, it would be a certain look. Well, that look that people are accustomed to happens to also correspond with law enforcement. In law enforcement, we were taught we would never wear our dark uniform pants, whether they were dark green or dark blue. We would never wear white socks. Uh, that would just look horrible. You've got your black boots on or your brown boots and then white socks and then a dark uh, pant. I mean, it's just that would not cut it. You'd sure be doing some push-ups if you ever came in for inspection and then that's what you looked like. Uh, and then ha a gig line, having your gig line lined up. So that's when your fly lines up, your pants fly lines up with your buckle, your belt buckle. You got to wear a belt. Like you don't wear pants without a belt. Even if you don't need them to keep your pants up, it's just obviously you're always going to wear a belt. So you wear your belt buckle in line with your fly, which is also in line with your shirt that's tucked in. And when those three things are all in a straight line, you've got a straight gig. 
that isn't going to be noticed by everyone. There are going to be people who are not familiar with professionalism or who have unique, wonderful, beautiful other perspectives who think that other looks are fine. So yeah, you won't you won't offend them if that's off. However, 10, 20, 30% of the population pays attention to this and goes, wow, that person is squared away. So having a straight gig line, um, not having stains on your pants, not having fancy pants, for example, with extra silvery vent holes in the pockets or sparklies or anything like that, just plain pants made out of some sort of material, cotton, polyester, denim, whatever. Uh, I guess denim is cotton. What, just a basic plain pant, not a stretchy, uh, sleek, velvety dress pant, just a basic pant. I'm talking about casual outdoor dress. You're going to a dinner party, that kind of thing. And it's it's casual classy. That's what professional classy uh, pants look like. The shirt, to have it buttoned up, there should be one button unbuttoned at the top. Don't go down two or three buttons so you can show your awesome hairy chest. Uh, save that for, well, yeah, do it for whenever you want, but not if you want to appear professional. Got to be all the way up. If your collar has those little buttons that keep the collar down, I think those are meant if you're wearing a tie to be able to uh, keep the tie in place or something like that. If, the, if those Little buttons exist on your shirt. Those should be buttoned. Your your collar should not be flopping to and fro. Your collar shouldn't be frayed. It shouldn't be stained. It should be sharp looking. Let's go up there to the next little level, and that's your neckline. Neckline should be cleanly shaven. You shouldn't see that scruffy, curly hair on the back of your neck. There should be a space between where your shirt is, including when you bend down, reach up, etc., there should be a space where there is no hair until your the hair of your head begins. There should be a neat, clean line that looks like it was trimmed that week between the top of your shirt and where your head hair starts. Your sideburns shouldn't come down too far in that, you know, look at me, I'm not skilled enough in whatever it is I do. I therefore need to have these lamb chops to look unique and special. No, just be unique and special in what it is you do in life and what you produce, and then you won't need to have silly stuff like that. Your uh, beard, if you choose to have one, should be very neatly trimmed. I would say that unless you have a very special circumstance, put a little effort in and just shave every day. Clean shaven face is the way to go. And I know that there are certain groups of people uh, who really like mustaches. I know that When I was in law enforcement, it was big. I know in uh, the homosexual pornography industry, it's big. Um, And so if you're in those industries and you want to do that, then go for it. But generally, a clean-shaven face for a man, that's what's considered to be professional. That's what your accountant and your attorney and most CEOs and CFOs and COOs, that's how they look. And some people kind of push the the limits. It's up to you if you want to be one of them. I suggest push the limits in your thinking and in your actions and in your creativity, creating things, but not fashion. If if it's a good idea to be professional for something, do the right thing and be completely professional. I'm going to skip down because I forgot shoes. Shoes, don't have them be fancy, weird stuff. Just a plain shoe that looks like you took care of it. It doesn't have poop on it or stain marks or paint marks or scuffs or sparklies or bright, brilliant, vivid, contrasting colors. Don't do that. Just look sharp, okay? 